So when you go into the station, you will find him totally stressed and looking anxious about your comments, like waiting if you will blame him or judge him or undermining him. So th that's the main area for you. So you have to go introduce yourself and uh, confirm his name and ask him that uh, he is the one recently joined your department and um, I, I read don't tell him how is everything going like that if you face any problem because he's already facing a problem and he came to you so first of all you you tell him um, I have read about what happened and I'm really really sorry for that um, I understand how stressful situation you were uh, you are in and uh, I I'm here to help you and support you so uh, can you tell me more about what happened exactly let him tell you in his own word so when you listen you have to be active listener and don't if he tell something wrong don't like uh, make some reaction by your face that this is not good or anything just wait until he finish completely and uh, then you have to calm him down don't worry everyone do, is doing mistakes even if you become a consultant you still do mistakes and uh, <clears throat> it's not necessarily uh, that if I do mistakes, so it means that means I'm not a good person. The good person who do the mistakes and learn from their mistakes, and without doing mistakes, we will not learn. We learn from our mistakes. So there is no worry at all. We can uh, manage. So the patient now is safe. You are safe, so no worries. We need just to have some learning points so that this will not happen again, okay? So you start with what he did, actually. I appreciate, so start always with what went well, okay? And then what could be uh, done better? You can't tell him what went wrong. No, tell him, first of all, we will go through what went well exactly. And then after that, I will tell you what could be done better. Okay, so what went well in this case? So when, when she came to the A&E, she was having abdominal pain and spotting and she has a missed period. So the good thing is that you went directly and assist the hair condition. Uh, so that's. Uh, very good from you you did a pregnancy test uh, so you think in pregnancy in uh, a patient who is uh, in a child bearing period was missing period that's that's very good and then um, you uh, requested for her uh, for her an ultrasound scan and that's also a good point for you so coming for what could be done better okay so even if the patient is vitally stable and she has a um, pregnancy test positive and vaginal spotting, so we may think in bleeding with early pregnancy because she missed her period for one week. So we assume she's five weeks almost pregnant. So we have some differential diagnosis for bleeding with early pregnancy. It can be either ongoing pregnancy and there is no worries or either it's a threatened miscarriage or miscarriage, missed the miscarriage or ectopic pregnancy or molar pregnancy. So it can be either any of these things. Okay, so how can you differentiate between all the causes for that? you have to run the beta HCG level. Okay, so how to differentiate between the causes? We need to, uh, first of all, examine the patient and do a speculum examination to assess 
the uh, cervical canal is open or closed or what what is the amount of bleeding and we have also to do some abdominal examination we have to look about any abdominal tenderness any um, rigidity because if she is having ectopic pregnancy she may have a tenderness on one of the iliac fossa region or suprapubic so after we confirm there is no active bleeding or no horrible bleeding is going on we remove the speculum we have to do a bimanual examination we have to feel the uterus the size of the uterus the orientation and also we try to do uh, try to to check for adenixial tenderness on both sides try to move the cervix and see the reaction of the patient whether it is painful or no because adenixial tenderness cervical motion tenderness are symptoms of or signs of ectopic pregnancy so we need to have a full examination and then after that even she is stable we need to do a beta hcg level as i told you once she it has a pregnancy test positive and she has a spotting we need a beta hcg beta hcg level we need to know roughly how far she is in pregnancy and we need to uh, know whether it can she can be scanned or no okay so do you know that we we can't see a pregnancy sac in the uterus below the level of 1000 uh, international unit of beta hcg that's why we need the beta hcg before the scan so we need to check whether this patient can be scanned or no can be scanned or no so if for example beta hcg came 3000 and we do a scan and we couldn't find any pregnancy that means for sure her pregnancy is ectopic but of for example if it came 300 so we don't have any idea we can't scan here at this level because it will not appear by any way even if it is intrauterine pregnancy so what we need to do next we can put a plan for her to uh, to repeat the beta hcg in 48 hours and see whether it is rising more than 66 percent or more so we will assume that it is a normal pregnancy if it is dropping that means she's miscarrying if it is stable or rising but to a suboptimal level that's mostly suggest an ectopic pregnancy so you send the patient to home and uh, no worries because she was vitally stable but if we know or if we have an idea about her beta hcg level could be better okay again if you send any patient to home you have to give her some warning signs okay so the warning signs i can give to this patient is to tell her to 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 discuss with her first of all the possibilities of the diagnosis she has to be aware of the possibility of ectopic pregnancy so that if she develop any kind of symptoms she has to come you can tell her if you develop severe bleeding you have to come if you feel that you pass clots or feeling unwell in yourself or you feel that you are drowsy unconscious or anything you, you have to come or you have any severe pain in your tummy or any um any abnormal symptoms that may be of worry you have to come so you have to give the patient the alert signs that she has to come when she feels that okay uh, there is no worry at all don't apologize because he will keep apologizing i'm really sorry i don't know i i'm sorry then no need to sorry at all you have to tell him like that there is no need at all to 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 be sorry we are all learning and we are here also for your support and your help and we can ask him have you debriefed the patient he will tell you no i couldn't go there because she raised a complaint against me she uh, she I, I i'm not sure if i can be uh, if i can go or no so you can tell him that in our practice 
uh, we must debrief the patient or we should debrief the patient don't don't must is not good here actually so we can tell him we we should debrief the patient explain what happened apologize because we we did something uh, for her it's it's very big okay so we need to apologize for that to uh, absorb her angry but it is her right to raise an, uh, a complaint we can also tell her that it's your right to complain uh, there is no worry we will do uh, a meeting and we will update you with the result of the meeting and everything if you feel that you are stressed or not able to go alone to this patient i can also come with you we can go together um, so once you are free you just come and we will go and one thing I want from you to do is to reflect on this event in your e-portfolio. So e-portfolio has what we call the form R. Okay, I bring for you, I brought for you some thing from form R. So form R is concerned uh, or uh, like uh, specific for reflection. As you can see here, this is part B which is uh, specifically for the reflection point. So in his e-portfolio, he will find this form R. He has to write about what significant event, if the patient complain, what is the patient complain, what are the investigation done, and um, he can uh, just uh, uh, write everything here and save it so it will be in his reflection point. Um, so the main thing here in this station is to be um, in a non-blame non atmosphere, to be supportive, to explain and to help your colleague to overcome what in, in the stress he is in. And also you can tell him if he feels so stressed and is not able to work, he has to take few days off and we will cover you we will support you because if you work with the stress you may do more mistakes you need to uh, keep your mind off for a few uh, days until you feel okay to work you can join back and continue as usual okay thank you